in which case yeah so it's so it's up on all streaming platforms in that case um but yeah it was just um he asked me to play bass on that song and i did and then we like recorded um guitar and piano for it as well um and funnily enough ended up re-recording all of that at like a later point and then that same day he was like hey uh do you want to play a gig together in a couple months and I was like, yeah, sure. So then through that, just kind of um, learned the rest of the songs that would be on the EP. And a lot of the songs, the like the first songs we worked on together had kind of like shells of bass parts that it was like, okay, this is like the main riff. And then this part, just like do whatever. Um, and then kind of over time through us kind of getting to like know each other and having this sort of really natural like collaboration of just being on the same wavelength like the track face to face he pretty much just played for me and was like i don't know what this is going to be on bass but if you want to write a guitar part for this that would be cool and i just said yeah sure like having never done anything like that like i'd come up with like bass parts for people's songs before but like guitar was like totally different for me um because i kind of just like I have like a very I've always had like a very sort of alternative approach to guitar playing we like, certainly have an alternative approach to the bass playing <laughs> yeah yeah and I mean I think like a guitar like just as much so because I actually um I was I think it was god five years ago I was um for, for several years I had like peripheral neuropathy so my fingers were um went went numb essentially like um I had like pretty oh, much wow. no sensation in my um, finger so I kind of had to like reteach myself guitar um with without a pick because i just wasn't capable of holding guitar pick anymore so i just i play like strictly finger style and kind of um was very interested in um like alternate tunings because i went through this um phase in college where i just viewed um standard tuning as the patriarchy which desperately needed to be toppled so i was (laughs) kind of like very interested in alternate tunings and using harmonics which also kind of came from like bass as well so that was like a really exciting thing because that was like the first time i kind of got to use my guitar voice that i had never um experienced before and that was kind of like a turning point in the collaboration because that was the first time that it was just kind of like me given free reign and it ended up being kind of a turning point for that track um and it's been really exciting and then there's so then there was like the last couple of tracks that um i did bass for it was essentially the same thing where it was just like hey here's the song no roadmap of what the bass is supposed to be just go for it do it feels right and yeah we that came out like we've come out of that with um uh, five track EP. Um, so we recorded it almost in, t- I think the, va- yeah, almost entirely last year. I think like the final bass I tracked, um, I like, um, kind of self engineered on bass, I think two or three of the songs at the, um, Wham studio. Um, I literally just, um, plugged my bass directly into one of the outboard pre's and, um, was just like sitting you don't, you at the don't chair. Need anything more than that. Pro- exactly. It's like sitting at the chair, like running Pro Tools, give me like one bar of pre roll, and then just like laid it down, which was um, anytime I can record in the control room, that's like my most comfortable place to do it. Even if I'm like not the one engineering, that's just kind of where I feel the most comfortable. I feel like the further I am from the console, the more kind of separation anxiety I get. So anytime I can record myself and just like be able to like, move faders at this like same time is just my preferred workflow um but then yeah so we recorded that so i played bass on every track um electric guitar on face to face and then he like did he did um vocals and all of his incredible vocal harmony stack like stacks and acoustic guitar electric guitar on several songs um and then he primarily came up with the um, piano part and then we both kind of like did like i think i handled for um one of the tracks in particular safe faithful i kind of handled a lot of the drum programming but that was kind of um done fairly back and forth By the time it got time to mixing, um, we were living, um, long distance. So, but I would, um, go down and visit, like, pretty much on a monthly basis and just, like, crash there for a couple of days. Um, so we would work on mixing, um, during that time. 
And then once COVID happened, we were like in the midst of mixing. Like there were some songs that felt pretty done and others that we had barely um, broken ground. Like there were some that like he was still um, fine tuning what the electric guitar parts were going to be. But we were um, able to create this surprise, like shockingly effective um, remote set up for mixing which was essentially mm. a combination of it originally started as um because i don't know if you're familiar with audio movers i've heard of it yeah yeah there's a, there's a guy in chicago i think that told me about it yeah, uh, yeah. no no Wallenberg. oh right you know, right yeah um who actually introduced me to packy yeah so. yeah yeah I, um i haven't met him personally but i kind of know of him through packy because yeah I know, I know he and packy have like um worked together quite a bit um yeah, so I mean, we used audio movers, which yeah, for people who don't know, it's essentially um, it's a plugin on Pro Tools that you put on your master um, fader that allows you to um, it pretty much just like streams your everything coming out of your master fader via web link with minimal latency and full audio quality. So we used that, um, and at first it was like that, and in conjunction with just, like Zoom and screen sharing. And then um, we found out about AnyDesk, which um, allows you to control someone's computer remotely. And that was kind of like a game changer as well, because then that went from him having the session open on his computer and me being like, okay, um, try that compressor. Oh, maybe like um, lay off on the attack a little bit. Okay, now what if we try this one instead? And, like, and kind of just me sort of like, um, like, directing from telling afar. him what to do exactly yeah um to like me just being able to sort of like be like okay how about this and then i would just like hijack his computer and um like like throw on some settings and then like it even got to the point because there were certain um like parts that i kind of would kind of have like very much like like a strong vision for that he would kind of um, pass on to me like um, the the mixing of the guitar part of state of um, sorry the mixing of the guitar part of face to face was one of those because that was like the guitar part that I had um, crafted as well and especially the bridge of that song which is um, just entirely harmonics and I think like for me just that like it's such like a simple part but it was like such a turning point for me as just a like songwriter composer instrumentalist and also i think that was kind of like a turning point for the song as well and i had a very clear vision of how i wanted to um do the processing on that bridge um so i essentially just like one evening just told him i was like hey you've had a long day go just like turn your computer on leave like leave everything open go watch tv for a couple hours i'm just gonna sit here at work and it also ended up being really and i would do that with like um if there was like things i had as far as like guitar tone that i felt should be a certain way um it would do the same thing where he would just kind of leave his computer turned on with any desk and audio movers going and then i would just um work remotely through his setup and then it was great because yeah it was it was great because then he could come back the next day with fresh ears so it wasn't like we were both so you guys really did like shared the load on on the on the engineering side of this record yeah absolutely um it was it's really um it's kind of difficult to pinpoint who did what at this point like there are certain things that like i mean i know like a lot of the stuff with like the vocals he um like he put he put a lot into because especially i mean he is incredible with just crafting these harmonies and just doing vocal doubles and takes that are just so on point so i those those were things that he had a very particular sense about so he would kind of take some more with that and for me like i think through um both with a song that i played guitar on and also just like my fascination with like guitar pedals and just like listening to a lot of guitar and having a very sort of clear sense of like guitar tone like those were certain things that i would gravitate towards doing more of but it was but even so it was like i would like spend a couple hours crafting guitar tone then he would come back the next day and kind of make some adjustments and it was like always such a back and forth um especially once we got to the point of kind of rather than both of us I think that because we were like, I mean, 
there were some weekends where I think over the course of like 27 hours, we would spend 14 hours online mixing together. Oh my God. It was like, I mean, we were just putting in what, cause once we got this remote setup down, it was like, okay, there's, there's no obstacles. There's no excuses. Let's just get this. Thing Did it done. really feel like there were no obstacles with the remote setup? It was like really easy to mix. It was like, like, like absurdly so like there was like yeah, like i would literally there would be sometimes that it, you would forget that like we weren't in the same room and that we were um that we that we had this like physical obstacle and that we like were using all of these workarounds like once we got it to that's crazy that point it was so seamless like do you think do you think it was more fatiguing though like you know people say like there's this thing as like the zoom fatigue like when you when you're on like these video calls and stuff do you think it was more it was like you would like get tired more more quickly or do you think it was pretty much the same i don't think so i think it it felt so identical to when we were when we would be um at his place and sitting for hours and like we'd spend 8 hours mixing at his place too so it kind of it was very um i mean i guess it was like a little more fatiguing in the sense that like we maybe like didn't always go for like I don't, I don't know how many times we did like eight full hours, but it was like, I mean, it just felt like we were there together and like constantly in dialogue and constantly just working and being super productive. So yeah, it was, it really was just so incredibly seamless. And I think yeah, so a lot of productive work came out of it, which is, I think is just so cool. Cause yeah, we originally, when this whole shelter in place happened, didn't really know what was going to happen. Um, it kind of seemed like a lot of it was just going to kind of fall onto him. And then I would just kind of like have to just take a step back from it. But then we were able to find these workarounds to where we were both able to stay involved. And yeah, it's kind of, there's, it's very, um, blurred. I mean, if you look at the, um, back cover art, it literally, I, th- I think just says like produced, performed, it's, it says like so, songs written by Isaiah or, or Joshua Ashburn is his um his given name, but he's, he goes by um his middle name Isaiah. But and then the next line is like produced, performed, recorded, engineered, mixed by um Joshua Ashburn and Layla Mohimani. Because we both had access to it so easily, it was like the like truest collaboration that you could possibly imagine. Wow. So sounds like a quite the ride in the experience. I mean, we we both grew a lot from it. And we're all we're actually um we thought that like the the I mean because we've been working on this. I I I tracked that first base part January February 2019 and we're in June 2020. So you would think that after a year and a half there would be some fatigue, you'd want to take a little break, but um we're already working on EP2 um, and Good. already nice. like already that, that's already coming together. And then um, we've been um, I've been um, engineering and like recording a track for him for um, his band that he um, used to have with his sister. That They're like um, starting to record some stuff again. Um, it's a band called Allegheny Street. And so I, we were um, she she lives in Virginia and she came to um she came to visit back in February and we like went into um, the Wham studio and I engineered her vocals. And now I'm like engineering his just out of my um, home studio at some point. Are men not allowed into, into the, into the Wham studio at all? They are. They are. Yeah, they are. No, we have, we like, we have, we have plenty of male clientele. It just so happened that like, because I mean, we like recorded like a scratch version of his vocals, but he wasn't necessarily like that happy with it um but i think like because she was like coming from virginia um we were kind of prioritizing like getting her stuff done in the, in the stew yeah but no i have no we have we have plenty of plenty of male clientele i, I, I was assuming so yeah. but then the way you said it, i was like mm, i wonder <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> no i've actually um i believe i'm trying to remember what i um i'm pretty sure i've engineered him at Wim before i can't remember exactly what but yeah, yeah. but yeah yeah we have like yeah the our clientele is like fully diverse it's just um it, like it's our staff that is um specifically just no, right. non cisgendered men got it um yeah i felt like you guys went for a very minimal approach for the genre of the music that it was what was the th- what was like the thought process behind that um in what in what way i don't know i felt like he was it was like very r&b like vocals with very like acoustic indie backing tracks it's like an interesting combination yeah it's definitely um our um phenomenal mastering engineer piper Payne. shout out to piper um she um 
I, like, I was um, able to um, remote 